Hello ladies and gents, I am Nadiffin, and this is From the Depths Adventure Mode, Season 1.7, uh, I believe it's Episode 10. In this episode, I would like to severely increase the durability of my craft, and also the maneuverability. It's only got a couple of thrusters at the side, and it turns abysmally. The other thing I do want to do is change these guns from their belt-fed variant into a consistent rack-fed loader. I've been designing some guns. So this is the current turret. Uh, this one fires very rapidly, but then takes a long time to reload, which in the last episode was very annoying because they ran out of ammunition at long range when they couldn't actually hit the target. And then when I was in range, they were reloading. So I'm going to be replacing them with these slightly smaller 5 meter ball turrets. Well, slightly cheaper, I mean, they're the same size. So these ones, there is also a slight difference. Um, they're slightly heavier armoured. Um, well, basically, the armour is actual armour instead of just wood. And they have a mantlet at the front. The other ones didn't use a mantlet because in the previous version before you had a material, it was actually beneficial they were mantlets were very expensive, so building guns without them was very was very good. Thing that ooh. anyway, um, be, but now there's only ten material difference in them, and it does help tracking. I've just noticed steam engines have gone live in this version. I thought it was only on Dev Test branch, but that's really cool. Well, I've never seen one of those. I'll have to play around with those in a little bit. So, one thing I do need to do though is change the round this gun is firing because this is not the round oh there I am so get rid of that it's only a four block long module and it uses a composite a sabo and yep yeah, it's already 71 millimeters see five there, not sorry, there, it's composite head. This has got a nice little arm piercing. This means it does good damage against a lot of material. Um, so that is. That's the Sabo and Comp. And it's got about two and a half kilometers. So, again, what I'll do, I'll give this a range, a maximum range of three kilometers per gun. So, up to here. Limit range, 3,000 meters. Are the loaders loading? Yes, they are. Good. Again, just change this one to 3,000 3, meters. And that means that these will now continue to fire constantly while in range. I think overall they fire less bullets per like hour or so, but per minute I find that consistent damage all the time is slightly better than spurts of high amounts of damage. What I've just done here, I've just built a couple of sticky flare launchers. And just test them out. So it has an automated control block which will fire the flares when a missile was it is within a thousand meters. And it's created a two block flare rather than the often standard one block because this is a very hot area for all the engines so I want to try and attract any flare, any um, <clears throat> any infrared sensing weapons oh goodness me away from them and so they need to be fairly hot Ooh, what I do need to do I need to put it actually on metal because if I don't it's just gonna get knocked off instantaneously Next thing I would like to do is build some. I have been designing weapons. I've got a five meter cram turret, and this basically fits, is going to be fitting in the hole round about here. One on either side. Unfortunately, they're a little bit more expensive than I had originally anticipated. What I can do, I could afford a couple of these guys. These are seven meter. Um, turrets, actually quite tall, and I've got them designed to be 200mm firing at 96 RPM. I've got there as a fragmentation weapon, which is very nice. And as you can see, this nice little turret. So this will need to go at the back. Though, oh, before I forget, I must, must 
improve the maneuverability of this thing. And I can pretty much turn on the spot now, which is much, much better. <coughs> Seems I'm currently being attacked by lightning hoods. Something like that, I'm not entirely sure. I managed to get my smoke generators up in time. Flying hoods, and wow, I just managed to hit it straight on there. The EMP is wrecking, wrecking through it, and I managed to take down the local weapons controller, so it's no longer firing at me. Ooh, that looked painful. And it is actually AI dead. Let's go take the resources. As you can see, I've actually been adding some additional thrusters onto the thing. Including some actually hidden thrusters down, down the back. So it actually looks, it actually looks a little bit better, I guess. Still looks like a dirty great big H. But not much I can do about that at the moment. I am liking the new engine effects. Um, they do look quite cool. Especially the ion engines, nice blue glow. Very impressive. Here we go, I've just decided to put on the detect viewer. And <laughs> good grief, look at that. They're saying all the time, all the targets for me. Yikes. Oh, goodness, I'm in combat again. Is that another Jacob's Folly? It is. Oh, it just got hit by something. Something a lot nastier. Wow, big hole in the side. Oh, that's because I've got a new small ammunition cache. Got to armor it up. My particle cannons seem to have re retargeted at this thing. That seems to have done a lot of damage. It's something crucial. Something crucial at the front and then EMP at the rear. How are you not dead? There's nothing left. This part of the don't seem to be firing that often now, it's a bit irritating. I think it must be hi riding higher in the water or something. Yeah. Well, they were, they were designed primarily as anti-aircraft weapons, not anti-ship. I do need to build my anti-ship guns on this. What was that from? Be you. A marauder. I've killed dozens of you in the sandbox. Wonderful block confetti when they get destroyed. Did you just EMP yourself? You just EMP'd yourself. Because they're being knocked off this left, right, and center. See what I mean by leaving wonderful confetti as it's been destroyed. Just bits get knocked off it and leaves a wonderful tale of destruction in its wake. We go, just circling the thing. And one of my particle cannons decided this was a better target and nuke that out. Hoplite. Ooh, my gun just got shot off. I think that was my own gun, actually. Yeah, they, they are unfortunately a little bit explodey like most advanced cannons. Oh, there's one th very important thing I haven't actually got, and that's target prioritization. And I would like a aim point selection. So 
that means that they will target high value components such as ammunition and AI. That would definitely help we take this out. Can mean that ships start aiming at you know the same point. So if too many if too many very powerful guns, they all aim at the same point and annihilate that one point, but doesn't do much damage to the ship. So sometimes you do want multiple different AI to actually and some with and without aim point. And I just shot off my own gun again. And the Marauder is deciding to try and mate with me. I know where its AI is, it's right there. What I've decided to do, I've decided to take this out in style. So, let's go back to build mode. I'm going to... I've built a long arm straight from my ship. And I'm putting a tactical nuke on the end. Put a nice slow motion to see what happens. And... Boom! <laughs> yeah, that that that's that's the way to do it. <laughs> and I'm just about to finish up with this resource zone. What I've had a little look at in the meantime is trying to have a look at some steam engines, see how I can make a nice efficient one. Unfortunately I can't seem to get one to the efficiency I like. So what I've done instead I have at last gone and made myself some RTGs. These RTGs then feed into these batteries, which are currently powering the main weapons. And what I've done is that if there are no enemies within, I believe it's five kilometers, yep, my fuel engines are turned off. Then when they come, enemies come back within five, five kilometers, the engines turn back on and then also start refueling the batteries. Otherwise, I run basically pure on RTG power and batteries. So at the moment, you can see down at the bottom there, my engines are not being drained at all. I have some minor drain for power. I believe the power is... What is the power actually being used for? Um, I have no idea. Fortunately, my electric engine is not strong enough to keep my ship running at the moment. Um, I... Well, at least with the, the RTGs aren't producing quite enough to keep me going. A uh, bit unfortunate, but I will sort that out, probably put another couple of RTGs in. Just while I head over towards this resource zone. Oh, uh, my particle cannons instantly fired and took down an enemy. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Wow, this looks really pretty. <laughs> that is an amazingly bright sun. Okay, my engines just started up. Uh, oh, there is something. I was like, I can't see anything. It's hidden up behind the F7. Never mind. Okay, we have a Marauder. Ah, another one of you guys. Maybe this one will be a little bit more successful. I'm going to have to that new kit at point blank range. Okay, the Marauder has actually fired at me. Though, I think I'm actually out of range of it. So... Here comes the cram shot. Wow, that is a long range cram shot. So, yeah, unsurprisingly it fell short. They got the shots, two particle accelerators firing. Now they're both on EMP. So it's neutralized the threat of the cram cannon. Well, the recoil is sending me off a bit wild. <laughs> Don't need two little guns. Goodness. I suppose that is the, what happens when you have a hydrofoil type craft that does decide to float around a little bit. Oop. 
I've got someone who's fired at something else. So what are you? Ooh, it's a big broadside thing. Winter's Day. That Maraud is still not dead yet. As the sun rises over it. No, nope, I'm I'm shooting at the mainframe, but still not actually destroyed. I've destroyed a load of blocks around it. I think the shot's actually deflecting off the water. It's very difficult to tell because they're pretty high velocity. I think they're deflecting off the water, which is causing the issue. Oh goodness! Let's, let's actually move away from my from my current location while that thing is coming in for broadside. Ooh, cram cannon hit. To cut load the wood, nothing major though. I do like the new flares, they do look kind of awesome. The enemy ship's still there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly build a new gun. I'm actually gonna build two new guns. It is my 200 millimeters at uh, 96 rounds per minute, and it's gonna be a fragmentation warhead. <coughs> so this is the round I'm going to be using. It is a super cavitation round, so that means it will enter the water and hit below the water line. And it has an inertial fuse, so it won't bounce off the shields. It then has several frags of standard cone, which will then punch through the, through the, through the hull at the bottom and make big holes to make it sink and destroy vital components such as AI. Very slow, but it's a good long range shell. It's probably firing at the moment, but it's firing the other shell so it didn't set it up right. The aiming on this thing is really bad. Look at that. Very, very poor line of sight. What's the red? And the black. Yeah. Now, that's why I haven't actually got any detection system working against it. It's only very basic detection. Got the main detection against this guy. Yeah, look, look at that. All that detection there. Whereas this guy. Yeah, very poor. Very poor line of sight. So the things at last getting hit, and you can see the fragmentation shells, when they hit, they do a decent amount of damage. And the super cavitation allows it to just travel straight through the water and hit the vital components without bouncing off. AI dead over here. Five cannons must have just decided to end the life of something. Yep. Okay, the enemy is a spite and is sending a lot of torpedoes in my general direction, which is not good. They seem to be shooting at me with a particle cannon itself, which is kind of worrying. You know, we'll just pull a second big gun at the rear. In the other point. That should be opening fire soon. I am a little bit short on ammunition, which is irritating. It is affecting my fire rate. I don't want to go into ammunition processes because that utilizes resources, and I am trying hard not to utilize too much. I don't want to use too many resources. Though, equally, I don't want to be building too many more ammo magazines because it makes my boat even more explodey. Excellent, just gathered another 4,000 resource. I did see a resource zone near here somewhere. Where was it? And the enemy has just spawned over in front of me, and that's within range of my guns. They've all opened fire. Sorry about the cat yowling. This is one of the reasons why I wanted a big 200mm gun, just because they have a huge range. The drop off though, what's the range of that? Let's change it to 3.5km as max range. 
Well done, you're just, you're just shooting the own gun there. Stop it! Water drive. Give me a pound of water. V cost is too great. Wow, so just a few combats. So she's got a very, very large amount of resources. I've got 11,000 on me at the moment. Just This ship has just disintegrated for another 9,000. And another little ship was taken out over here for another 800. I actually don't have enough resources on my boat to supply all this. So, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add a new gun. Well, in fact, two, one each side. So the weapon I'm going to be adding is a cram cannon on each side. Excellent. <clears throat> Excellent. I have added the cram cannon onto the one side. I need to add it onto the other. So I'm just going to head over to here. I've also added PID controls. So, to... The PID controls were meant to keep me above the water. Um, utilising thruster to keep the rear end up in term different recoil. However, it seems to have also turned the hydrofoils off, so I'm not actually lifting up out of the water. Okay, I've got the hydrofoils constantly resetting um, at the moment, just just to get it working. Um, I'll figure. I need to figure out why the the PID is affecting the hydrofoils and not just the thrusters, because I don't want I don't want on the hydrofoil set at 45 and not to be reset to keep this thing level. Okay, cram cannon at his fire. So the cram cannon is fired. And that was a good a good aim. There we go. I have now built a second cram cannon. Got the fragmentation gun at the rear. Two cram cannons now, and then the little tiny guns at the front. So I've just got a good array of guns at the moment. I do need some more countermeasures, so I'll actually probably do that. I'll probably do that next. A good place to save and head over to the vehicle designer. First up, we have the five meter cram turret. These are the ones I've just recently added. They are a very simple design. See, it has <clears throat> you can see the stats here. So it's about a fairly long reload time, 17 seconds, 1,700 millimeters ish, and it has a few fuses. It does have a good amount of packing, and it's, as I said, it fits. It's a five meter turret. What I have here in the fusing, I have time from first impact and time from first from launch. So what does that mean? It means that it will always be a timed explosive. So if it's reflected from a target or misses, the time from launch means that it should detonate nearby the target. The time from first impact means that it will pe it can penetrate through a target and then explode. I generally prefer this one to the penetration depth because if it hits like, if you say you say two meters of penetration and it only goes through one and then it exits the other side of the ship, it won't actually detonate. Whereas time from at first impact, it will always detonate. So here we go in the internals. So as the locals weapon controller internally, it has mainly explosive valves and then the actual air connectors go all the way around, giving me a good number of connections for the autoloaders. As you can see, I have a good number of boxes there. It moves up to here to a primarily motor-driven barrel, and I just have a normal barrel. I don't have any flash suppression or anything, and it has a in integrated coincidence rangefinder for giving nice, accurate bearings on things. I'll just fire this at my nice target over here. Go through, as you can see, a lot of layers of metal. So let's see what it looks like. And I bet I'm going to miss this target. I often do this. It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> So there we go, it just took out I was at th I was, um, three layers of metal quite handily there. It's fairly slow firing, but it does do a good amount of damage. Just wait for it to reload and pause. Oh, and wait for a second and 
pause, there we go. It is reloaded. You can see it does a lot of damage, a lot of explosive damage. And has a good amount of arm piercing. It's not the best weapon ever, but it does do a, as you can see, it does do a significant amount of damage. And again, just fired at, at that target. So it does a, even against a four layer thick metal, it does strip off a couple of layers of metal itself. So a very nice little gun. It does, is unfortunately fairly pricey. As you can see, it's um, just shy of 7,000 resource. But it will, this very small gun will quite happily do damage against some of the bigger targets. This next gun is one I've had a little while now. Um, I just forgot to actually explain it properly. So, I will just explode the view. It has a good number of autoloaders. The majority are have three rack, are three rack loaders, though there are a few four in there as well. I've snaked it all around and tried to limit the number of actual six-way connectors. Did need to use a few in order to fit these in because trying to fit the rack autoloaders when they're you know three and four connect, connection racks is quite challenging. It does, however, mean it has a good rate of fire. Oops, I need to reload this thing. And I need to wait a little while for all to reload to get the maximum fire rate. Again, I have decided to go with a integrated coincidence rangefinder, just allows a little bit more, and an ele a three meter elevation barrel. What this allows me to do is allows to aim down into the base of a ship which is why the super cavitation is so good, because you can see it aim a very low. But also, just allow me to aim quite high for long range tank, but also take out, have anti air capability. This is not for taking out small flyers, this is for taking out the big flyers, such as the Onyx Watch Eerie and some of the Scarlet Dawn thruster crafts, which are absolutely ginormous. And normal flak weaponry does not do it, you have to use anti-ship weaponry, and this is definitely that. So, fire this, it does a decent amount, does a decent amount of damage. It doesn't quite go through a single block of metal, sim single beam of metal, which is unfortunate. What I probably need to do is change the angle of the penetration to around about 30, but also, the super cavitation does reduce the number of fragments you have uh, by a significant amount. I think it's 25%, yeah, 25% reduction. But it allows you to go, it does penetrate underneath the waves, so it does a lot of damage and into the more important parts of the ship. Let's just reload this thing. So I've just changed the angle from 60 to 30, and this does seem to be considerably better at making mess through beams. Even the be even the beam with you no know, wood beam with metal behind it, and even a double metal beam does do significant damage. Doesn't quite go all the way through. But hopefully now it makes a little bit more sense about the guns I have actually equipped on this boat and what they are capable of. Meanwhile, I am going to continue working at this resource zone. I'm waiting for whatever that is to come and attack. My two long range advanced cannons have begun firing at three and a half kilometers. Let's see how they do. Considering the range, that is really accurate. So what's the detection? Yet yeah, the detection is diabolical at that range. I am hitting and knocking bits off it though now and then. Yeah, the other gun's now firing. And the cannon hits, knocking it AI dead instantly. What we've just had onto the ship is a new radar boy system. What this will do, this is controlled by a local weapons controller, and it will actually fire this missile 
at the target, which should give a better reading, um, more accurate reading from the initial detection. I am hoping that it's the case anyway, because just because those those detections on that ship were really bad, and I need to get better visibility in order to hit things. And I think this is one method of doing it, i.e. launching radar at the target. So the boy fi is fired and it goes forwards. The one turn did not seem to work. Great, you just shot off your own radar. Luckily I did just build another couple of protection systems. And that Vanguard retrofit is already dead. Two enemies. Okay, one has fired a cram shell. Okay, I have a Marauder. Mar Marauder is engaged with... Dark Hammer. So Dark Hammer is flares. Yep, so that's currently getting wailed on. My cram shells have fired. I think I'm going to be sh a bit short. Here come the other shots. Just a little bit short range on those. The cram shell detonates. Did not seem to do much of anything. Shells though, the fragmentation. Ooh, cram straight in the gut. AI dead, straight in the middle. It's got a little bit of resource to gather here. So, so about 3,000 more resource to gather. And then I will head through this portal. That resource zone has like 100 resource in it. It's really not worth it. And through the gate we go. And I have no idea where I am. There we go, into a new area. What difficulty are we at? So, 1.331 and heading south. Now getting over 100% experience. Fantastic. I think though that this is a perfect place to leave off this episode. So thank you very much for watching this episode of From the Depths with myself and the Diffin. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment as it is always great to hear from you a lot. Otherwise, that's it from me for now and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye.